Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. So this afternoon, I wanted to speak directly to our West Palm Beach residents about uh, demonstrations being planned in our city, uh, the current state of emergency that is in effect, and efforts that we are undertaking to continue to ensure the public's safety. Uh, but first of all, let, let me just say that I know this past week, these past few months have been difficult for everyone. My heart aches uh, for the families and friends of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, whose lives were snuffed out so unnecessarily at such young ages. I feel the frustration and anger of those who have taken to the streets to protest such injustice. Our thoughts and prayers also go out to those struggling from the impacts of COVID-19 and the economic fallout resulting from this pandemic. You know, all of these events, the pandemic, the economic fallout, the unfortunate deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, and the recent demonstrations have had a significant impact upon us all. Many of you out there have felt loss, grief, frustration, anger, and I too have experienced a whole range of emotions. I understand that. And let me assure you, we will get through this. And my sincere hope is that there will be significant transformative changes coming out of recent events. But this afternoon, I did want to share with you some updates as we enter into this weekend. First, as it has always been and always will be, public safety is my priority number one. If there is any one essential responsibility of a mayor, it is to keep the residents of that city safe. My primary focus right now is protecting the general public, protecting West Palm Beach police officers, and protecting the peaceful demonstrators in our city. Let me assure you, the city of West Palm Beach recognizes and acknowledges the rights of citizens to peacefully protest. Indeed, I have instructed my police chief to work with this department to protect the First Amendment rights of the demonstrators. So as we enter the weekend, our residents should expect additional protests and demonstrations in our city. Uh, we know there are a couple, one this afternoon, another one this evening, another one tomorrow, and maybe even one or more on Sunday. Just encouraging everyone to please use due care when moving throughout our city. And I urge anyone planning to demonstrate in our city this afternoon, tonight, or over the weekend, to please keep it peaceful. In just a few moments, uh, Police Chief Frank Adderley will speak about the steps that his department is undertaking to protect public safety. But again, I want it to be very, very clear. We welcome peaceful protests in this city, particularly in light of recent events. We continue to support demonstrators' right to protest peacefully. And our police department continues to work with demonstrators in support of peaceful protests. In fact, two protests in the last week, one with approximately 3,000 people, were mostly peaceful. And to the credit of our very fine men and women in blue, not a single person got hurt. In my view, I admit that I'm biased, West Palm Beach has become an example of how police and demonstrators can work together uh, to facilitate a peaceful protest. Now let me talk about the curfew. Uh, as you know, I declared a state of emergency and opposed a nighttime curfew for West Palm Beach on last Sunday. 
the imposition of this curfew is one of the tools being utilized right now to ensure public safety. And on Monday night, the City Commission voted unanimously to extend that curfew until further notice. For the most part, people have been abiding by the curfew. Uh, but let me assure you, however, however, that we will continue to enforce vigorously the curfew throughout its existence. Uh, any person or business that violates the curfew, I promise you, you will, they will suffer consequences. I am commanding that the curfew be enforced to the fullest extent of our legal and public safety resources. So we are extending the curfew to and through the end of the weekend. Uh, it will be in effect uh, tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday night, and we will see where we are uh, come Monday. It's my hope to lift the curfew soon. Uh, but we will lift the curfew only when uh, Police Chief Adderley and I have assurances that future demonstrations in our city will be peaceful. Uh, let me discuss briefly a re item related to the curfew uh, because I have and City Hall has received a lot of uh, emails, phone calls uh, in recent days about what the curfew means for firearms. Uh, please know that during the period of said emergency, uh, the state of Florida preempts local government regulation of ammunition, guns, or other firearms. So the language in the executive order which prohibits the carry of, public, of, of, of firearms in the public uh, and the sale of guns and ammunition uh, during the term of the curfew is lifted right out of Florida statute. Uh, I merely recited the automatic emergency measures that have been imposed by the state of Florida. Now, there have been some claims by the media that I am unilaterally trying to take guns away or violate the Second Amendment. That simply is not the case. Uh, I have consulted with the state attorney. I've consulted with my city attorney, uh, and they both agree that this is the state of the law. I also want to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm hearing, some chatter I'm hearing about uh, some fissures, some cracks, some differences in our business community. Uh, it's come to my understanding that uh, there are a number of business owners, especially in our downtown, that are concerned about damage to their businesses and their professional reputations uh, because of some allegations on social media. Normally, I don't engage in uh, social media squabbles, uh, but I think that during this time uh, where there is, where nerves are so frayed and businesses are doing everything that they can to just hold on between the pandemic and the curfew, um, that I, I think it's important that uh, I, 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 I speak out in support of our businesses, particularly those that are downtown. Uh, and I've talked to the owners of several of them, and I can assure you that contrary to representations in social media, uh, these businesses, their beliefs about First Amendment and indeed about race have been mischaracterized. Uh, it's my understanding, based upon those conversations, that these businesses are very supportive of a peaceful protest and everyone's right to speech, to right to free speech, uh, and uh, that they don't harbor any racist motives. Uh, and claims that they significantly oppose these things are, to the best of my knowledge, false. I would just hope, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, that during this very precarious time, uh, we would work together to move ahead as a city. Um, I often say when I'm talking uh, to you all that that is the West Palm Beach way. It's WPB together. And so finally, before I turn it over to Police Chief Adderley, I just want to encourage everyone out there to let, let, let's remain peaceful, uh, let's remain united about 
the future of our city. Now more than ever, we need unity in our community. The calls for unity in our community vastly outnumber the calls for division. There is yet so much work to be done, I understand that. But I am encouraged by the calls for change that are coming from such a broad swath of people. Black, white, brown, young and old, who are literally risking their lives in the midst of this pandemic to express their views. Let us move forward as a community the West Palm Beach way, together. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, echoing some of the thoughts of the mayor and his message today and some of the things that we've said over the few days, uh, our contact with the peaceful protesters in our city has been great. We believe that their voice is real and we support their views of injustice and their voice is loud. Our issue when it comes to an enforcement is the individuals that come to this city that want to be disruptive. We have the curfew. I'm the person that asked for this curfew because I felt that we needed that curfew on Sunday. And some of the actions that have taken place since that kind of gave us the indication that we continue to need the curfew in order to make sure that our city is safe. So we're encouraging the peaceful protesters, come out. We're gonna do everything we can to create a, a safe environment so that you could have a peaceful protest. But we're gonna have a plan in action if we have to take certain measures to keep our city safe. So at this time, uh, you know, as far as our plan, our plan is, we're going to continue to do what we've done for the last few nights. I think we have uh, support from our neighboring uh, law enforcement partners in the area uh, that are uh, working with us and helping the true cause of keeping the city of West Palm Beach a safe city. So we're here to answer any of your questions if you have them. Thanks. Any questions? Yeah, the, the first draft of it seemed to suggest that there could be no alcohol sales at all. We wanted to clarify that there should be no alcohol sales during the period of the curfew. So in other words, after 9 o'clock and before 6 p.m. But any other times of day that during normal business hours, uh, alcohol sales would, would be permitted. Similarly with uh, public gatherings, uh, the, the first draft uh, prohibited public gatherings totally. Uh, that was, you know, as we looked at it, that was not the intent. We only, only wanted to prohibit those during the hours of the curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. And so then that language from the original draft was different than um, the automated yeah, the, the language regarding firearms is the, 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 the language that comes from the state statute. All right, the other language is, is, is our language regarding the terms of the curfew. But that language is mandated, the, the firearm language is mandated by state statute. And we do have representatives of the state attorney's office here. Thank you for coming uh, if, they, if you wanted elaboration on that particular point. Okay, so the question was, I, people were telling me I need to repeat the questions, I'm sorry. The question was, what percentage of the protesters, demonstrators are, are like bad actors? Agitators, yeah, however you'd like to describe All right, I'll defer to the chief and his crew to answer that question. I think when you look at Sunday, uh, you know, this, the event started about 11 a.m. And for about eight hours, we had a large group of pe people, and I think that crowd got to well over 3,000, maybe even 4,000 people before 7.30. I think it's a smaller group of individuals, you know, when they walk into the city to a peaceful protest, 
carrying uh, a gallon of milk. That means they're going to do something to, ag to, to, to uh, agitate the crowd or, or the police to cause them or us to respond to them. They came here with a purpose. If you look at some of the uh, social media clippings that's out, they said, protest now, riot later. Okay? We're saying, let's have the peaceful protest, but riot later, we're going to be prepared for that if it gets to that point. So I think it's a small group of individuals uh, compared to a large group of people who came here for a purpose, and I'm being told that their purpose tonight is to have a peaceful protest. If we're like out in the crowd and you know these peaceful protesters um, want to be vigilant, like what kind of signs can they look for? Uh, you know, if you're dealing with somebody who's maybe more along the lines of an agitator, like are you seeing similar trends in these types of people? Like for example, you mentioned the gallon bill. Yeah. Well, we have. Repeat the question. The recruit the question is what are we looking for and what we should say to peaceful protesters when they see things like individuals that are here that want to agitate and cause a disruption. Uh, we're going to be there. We're going to probably pick them out. Uh, on Monday night, we had a group of individuals that, you know, picked out individuals and, and they brought it to our attention, working with us. And that's a sure sign of you know, the police department working with the peaceful protesters to address those individuals. So uh, we're asking them, we're here to support them, and we want to continue to do that. And uh, if they have some individuals like that, bring it to our attention, our attention, and uh, we'll address them. Are you, uh, are you seeing that uh, the agitators that are coming in, are they local, are they from out of town, are they known to you? Or most, of the, most of the people I had, Repeat the question, Chris. The question is, are, we, are there local individuals that are the agitators in the crowd? Well, the ones that I came in contact and I personally had conversations with don't live here. I spoke to people that, you know, from Broward County, Dade County. I spoke to a guy who was from Gainesville. I spoke to some, some individuals that from other cities around the state. Um, those were the ones that I personally came in contact with. And uh, yeah, I would say that there's individuals, you know, when, when you have a group of people that want to go and vandalize Target in our outlet malls, at a time when this is June and everyone's being pre getting prepared for hurricane season, why would they want to take Target away when you live here in the city? It doesn't make sense. So, you know, you take Target away when you don't have to rely on Target and you don't live here. Any other questions? Um, I, I did want to give the did, did, uh, representatives of the state attorney's office. Did you want to elaborate at all, or no, only if there's a question? Okay, on the weapons. I just have one more question. There's been some uh, rumors that people like made, you know, again along the lines of possible agitation or possible violence against police officers. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like, what penalty could they face if they violate the curfew? I mean, what, what's your message to them? So the question is, what uh, do we propose to do if there's a violation of the curfew? Uh, let me assure you, then I'll let uh, the chief weigh in on it. As the mayor of the city, I take the curfew very seriously. Uh, again, this was imposed not willy-nilly. Uh, this was imposed after uh, a consultation with my chief of police and after serious concern about the, the safety uh, of uh, citizens in the city, businesses in the city, as well as uh, uh, the men and women in blue who, who protect uh, the citizens of the city. So this, this is a decision uh, that I took very, very uh, much to heart when I made. And, and so as the mayor, I'm expecting it to be enforced to the fullest extent of the law. Chief, I don't know if you want to go any further as to plans for enforcing the, the curfew or we'll just leave it. Well, I mean, we're gonna, we, that gives us the authority to clear the streets and our city and make sure it's a, it's a peaceful uh, environment. Uh, yeah, we're gonna take action. And uh, those individuals that resist arrests or uh, throw missiles at us, whatever it may be, yeah, we're going to take action. And we have uh, the support of our law enforcement partners here in the area. And I think we're prepared for that. 
And let, let me just add, th this is not a game, people. Uh, th this is serious stuff. People's lives are at stake, um, and we, we, we should not be playing around with this as if this is a competition between the police and, and, and those who don't like the police. Uh, we, we, we will restore and maintain proper law and order in this city. And, and so my advice to anyone who is uh, thinking about violating the curfew is A, don't do it, uh, and B, uh, B, be prepared uh, for consequences. Yes? Um, since Ms. Ellis is here, could we possibly have her just explain in a little bit more detail about the guns um, during the state of emergency? Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Ellis, do you? I don't know who was prepared to speak from the city attorney. I mean, from the state attorney's office. I apologize for the way that I'm dressed today. This was a uh, it's Friday, it's a casual Friday. Um, but I just echo what the uh, mayor and the chief uh, have already said. Uh, we do plan on enforcing anyone who violates curfew and anyone who violates any order that is contained within that that state of emergency uh, curfew. Uh, the statute uh, is under 870.044, and the statute reads, and I'm just going to read part three because that's what's pertinent here. It says, the intentional possession in a public place of a firearm by any person except a duly authorized law enforcement of official or person in military service acting in the official performance of, of his or her duty. So basically what this is saying is that do not bring a gun to a peaceful protest. That is essentially what this is saying. Do not bring a firearm to a peaceful protest. That's all this is saying. And if, um, if you make the decision to do that, if you elect to do that, as the mayor has said and as the chief has said, be prepared to deal with the consequences because we will prosecute. There are people who are entitled to protest peacefully and we respect that, and all we're doing is asking people to show them the same respect. So I would just direct you, uh, Ms. Parker, to, uh, and I'm saying you, Terry, because I know you asked the question. Uh, it's under 870.044, and it's actually, um, it's, it's, it's the entire statute, but what is in pertinent part uh, for us is um, subsection three, okay? All right, so um, as I said, I just, you know, since the mayor did allow me to speak, I just, go ahead, go ahead. I, I, you know, I just want to, th this is, this is so important. And I just, you know, we love our city. We love our state. And, and, and I am just imploring people and asking people to please, please obey the curfew. Have respect for people's right to protest peacefully. Do not bring guns to a peaceful protest. I implore you to do that, please. And if you don't, please be prepared to deal with the consequences. Thank you. One thing I would like to add to that is because there's some suggestion that we are taking away people's firearms. That, that, we, that is not what is happening in West Palm Beach. No one's firearms uh, are, are being taken away. Now, if you bring them uh, out in public, uh, as part of the consequences, you will lose uh, your firearm, but we're not going into people's homes, removing guns. We're, that's not what we're doing. Any other questions? Again, thank you all very much. Uh, have a good weekend and be safe.